Okay, uh, section two is about endocrine glands. The first two, two important endocrine glands are hypothalamus and pituitary gland. These two endocrine glands control the production of many hormones produced by endocrine glands. Hypothalamus, you know, belongs to dancephalon and it has two important functions, one nervous system function and endocrine system function. The nervous system function of hypothalamus mentioned in chapter 4 like maintaining homeostasis and receiving information from other brain centers and respond. But at the same time, hypothalamus has endocrine function because the hypothalamus contains neurosecretary cells. What are neurosecretary cells? Neurosecretary cells are specialized neurons that can produce hormones. Uh, some of these neurosecretary cells extend their axons into the uh, posterior pituitary gland. You know, pituitary gland is divided into posterior lobe and anterior lobe. The axon of these neurosecretary cells extend and their axon terminal is within the posterior lobe of pituitary gland. Hypothalamus is connected to the posterior lobe via axons and these two types of neurosecretary cells produce two hormones, oxytocin and ADH. ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. Uh, these two hormones have targets inside the body. How these two hormones transport to their targets? Of course, by, by blood. Oxytocin is produced by male and female, but only female is mentioned in your book. In female, it has two targets uh, produced in two situations. During lactation or breastfeeding, the target of oxytocin are mammary glands of mother contract the mammary glands to flow the milk, not milk production. And during childbirth, uh, it contracts smooth muscles of the uterus to help childbirth. Uh, what about antidiuretic hormone? You know, I stands for anti, anti means against, D, diuretic, H for hormone. This hormone has target cells within the kidneys. Which part of kidneys? Nephrons. You, I, I, you, you studied nephrons in grade 9. And which part of nephron? In nephrons consists of several parts. The tubules. What does ADS do to the tubules of kidneys? Uh, it re stimulates the kidney tubules to reabsorb, reabsorb what? water. And reabsorption of water, you know, water is solvent, you studied in chemistry, uh, decreases solute concentration. I'll repeat, IDH is another hormone produced by hypothalamus, but release it from the posterior lobe. The target cell of IDH are kidney tubules. Kidney tubules are part of nephrons, and nephrons are functional unit of kidneys. Stimulate these tubules to reabsorb water, reabsorption of water leads to decreasing solutes concentration. Why? Because water, you know, is solvent. The more solvent concentration, the less solute concentration. And finally, decreases the urine production. That's why they named antidiuretic hormone. The relationship between hypothalamus and anterior lobe of pituitary gland is through a network of blood vessels. Hypothalamus produces two more hormones groups called releasing hormones and releasing inhibiting hormones. These two hormones are transported to the anterior lobe via blood vessels. The target cell of RH and RIH are endocrine cells of anterior lobe. Releasing hormones stimulate these endocrine cells to produce their hormones, while releasing inhibiting hormones inhibit or stop production of hormones by these endocrine cells. What are the hormones produced by the anterior lobe? Anterior lobe can produce several hormones, only five of them mentioned in your book, like thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH, prolactin, growth hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. Each of these hormones have targets within other parts, other glands in the body. Let's study first the TSH. How TSH is produced? We start from the hypothalamus, you know. First, hypothalamus produces a releasing hormone called TRH, or thyroid, thyrotropin releasing hormone. Then thyrotropin releasing hormone stimulate the endocrine cells of anterior lobe to produce TSH. And TSH stimulates thyroid gland to produce two hormones, which are triiodothyronine and thyroxine. 
and in the uh, thyroid gland we'll talk about their function they have several functions they have a role in metabolism they have a role in the homeostasis of the body um, what about the uh, ICTH how ICTH is produced first hypothalamus produces ICTHRH or adrenocorticotropic hormone releasing hormone and this hormone stimulates the endocrine cells to produce ACTH and the target cell of ACTH is the cortex of adrenal gland you know the adrenal gland uh, consists of two regions like here we'll talk about later cortex and medulla the target cell of uh, uh, ACTH is the cortex not medulla stimulate the cortex to produce two steroid hormones you know what are steroid hormones made from cholesterol they are fat soluble which are cortisol and aldosterone and you will talk about later what are the function of these two hormones another hormone produced by the anterior lobe is prolactin prolactin is produced during lactation or breastfeeding so now we have two hormones that are produced during lactation oxytocin and prolactin how prolactin is produced during breastfeeding when the baby sucks the mother the breast of mother this sucking stimulates the hypothalamus to produce a releasing hormone then this releasing hormone stimulates the endocrine cells of anterior lobe to produce prolactin the target cell of prolactin are mammary glands so two hormones have targets within the mammary gland which are prolactin of anterior lobe and oxytocin of hypothalamus prolactin unlike the oxytocin stimulates the mammary glands to produce milk so two hormones are important for uh, 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 mammary glands during breastfeeding which are oxytocin and prolactin another hormone produced by the anterior lobe is growth hormone growth hormone uh, uh, has two targets within the body skeletal muscles and bones G stimulate the skeletal muscles to grow and stimulate the bones for ossification specifically elongation elongation you know we talked about elongation in chapter one section two is a process by which bo long bones of arms, legs, uh, increase in length, density, and uh, circumference. Uh, the last two hormones produced by the anterior lobe are FSH and LH. We'll talk about uh, these two hormones in more detail in chapter six, section one and two. These two hormones are produced by both male and female uh, when they reach uh, uh, the age of puberty. Uh, uh, FSH and LH, how they are produced. First, when a male and female reaches puberty, this age stimulates the hypothalamus in both male and female to produce uh, 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 releasing hormone, and this releasing hormone is called GNRH, which is not mentioned in your book. GNRH stimulates the anterior lobe to produce LH and FSH. The target cell of FSH and LH are found in both male and female gonads. You know what are gonads? Gonads are testes in male and ovaries in female. FSS stimulate the testes of male to produce sperms, but with the help of testosterone. So if there is no testosterone, testes cannot make or produce sperms. And at the same time, FSS has targets within the female, which are the ovaries, stimulate the ovaries to mature their follicles containing eggs. Uh, LH, LH like FSS has targets in both male and female, in males stimulate the testes to produce testosterone so if there is no LH testes cannot make testosterone we'll talk about this subject in chapter 6 section 1 and in of in females stimulate the ovaries to produce two steroid sex hormones called estrogen and progesterone and they have several functions mentioned in chapter 6 section 2 uh, this is the uh, relation of hypothalamus and pituitary gland now uh, we will talk about another endocrine gland which is uh, the adrenal glands uh, we have two adrenal glands located above the kidneys each adrenal gland uh, consists of two portions which are cortex and medulla these two parts of endocrine gland act as two independent endocrine glands. Why they are independent? Independent in what? Independent in the way they are regulated. Independent in the type of hormone they produce. Uh, let's study first cortex. How cortex is activated? In what situations 
cortex is activated. When we have stress, especially long-term stress, hypothalamus is activated and produces a releasing hormone called adrenocorticotropic hormone releasing hormone and nowadays is called CRH. This hormone stimulates the endocrine cells of anterior lobe to produce ACTH and ACTH stimulates the cortex of adrenal gland cortex of adrenal gland to produce two steroid hormones what which are cortisol and aldosterone you know cortisol and aldosterone are made from cholesterol so that's why cholesterol is important for our processes like production of steroid hormones Cortisol has targets within the body in several uh, organs and tissues. The main important function of cortisol is converting proteins to glucose. That's why if someone has a long-term stress for a long period of time, it leads to increasing blood sugar. Another hormone produced by the cortex is called aldosterone. Aldosterone, like ADH of hypothalamus, has targets within kidneys. They have similarities with uh, ADH. It has similarities with ADH. The, 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 the first similarity between aldosterone and ADH, both have targets within kidneys. Another similarity, aldosterone like the ADH stimulate water reabsorption. ADH do the, does the same pr process. But the main difference between aldosterone and ADH Aldosterone can reabsorb salts, especially uh, sodium salts. That's why reabsorption of water and salt leads to increasing blood volume and puts more pressure on the wall of arteries and finally leads to what? Hypertension. Of course, ADS leads to hypertension, but this is not mentioned in the book. And in medicine and biology, ADS is also called vasopressin or presses blood vessels. Pressing blood vessel means in, uh, leads to what increasing blood pressure. Uh, what about the medulla? Medulla of adrenal gland is independent of cortex in many conditions. This part of, of, of adrenal gland is activated during fight or flight responses. You know, we talked about fight or flight responses in chapter four, section two, final subject, uh, fight or flight responses like what? like uh, physical attack, like emotional stress, like nervousness or emergency situations. During these emergency conditions, you know, uh, 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 sympathetic division of autonomic nervous system is activated. You know, autonomic nervous system is part of motor division of peripheral nervous system. Uh, when sympathetic is over activated during fight or flight responses, of course, the medulla of adrenal gland is activated. When the medulla is activated, it starts production of two peptide hormones. So now the medulla produces peptide hormones while the cortex produces steroid hormone. This is the difference. And another difference I said is the, is the way they are activated. Uh, uh, these two peptide hormones are epinephrine and norepinephrine, and their old names are adrenaline and noradrenaline. Th they have differences, but the differences are not explained in your book. Uh, these two hormones have several effects on our body. They, they lead to uh, increasing blood pressure, they lead to increasing blood sugar, increasing blood flow to the heart, that's why increases, they increase heart rate and increase blood flow to the lungs, that's why they lead to increasing respiration rate and they enlarge bronchial tubes to allow more air into the lungs to provide more oxygen for these dangerous conditions and dilate pupils in the human eyes. How? By, if, by the effect on the iris pigmented smooth muscles in the human eye and, and that's uh, uh, the adrenal gland.